ladies and gentlemen, welcome. And it's an absolute pleasure to be back in Newcastle. I think uh, fair to say, um, particularly you guys and this man to my right, revolutionised the fight scene in the last couple of years here. Just to think that come on April, you might be on your own at this bottom table, so don't worry. Come on, you've got the whole table. Hey, April Hunter, everybody. Let's get ready. It's going to be good. Chad Ellis is on as well, I believe, so don't worry if you join us all. Um, it's going to be nearly two years, actually, when we return on April the 4th um, to the Utility Arena. There, Lewis Ritson first had his big fight there against Paul Highland. I remember being a little bit nervous. We know that the Newcastle fight scene's been bubbling for a year. Phil Jeffries and the guys have done a great job <coughs> to make sure that it stays active. And great performance from Lewis Ritson that night. We know he went on. And the Patera loss, as we've said before, was one that probably made him as a fighter, but at the time sort of took the wind out of the sails and wondered if we would go on from there and, and sort of claim this city to be a major fight night city for Sky Sports and, and broadcasters around the world. The job that Lewis did was to come back, you know, work away behind the scenes, and who can forget the Robbie Davis Jr. fight last time out? It was one of the fights of the year. It was just a brilliant occasion. He sold the complete venue out. And now, boxing in Newcastle has become a night out, an experience, so much so that we see people coming from all over the country to experience the atmosphere that you guys are creating. And it's become a Leeds for Josh Warrington, it's become a Belfast for Carl Frampton, and it's become a Newcastle for Lewis Ritson, because he's really become now one of the major draws of British boxing, and you guys have created an atmosphere that is almost like become a tourist destination to go to a fight night in Newcastle. And that's what it's all about. It's about generating atmosphere. It's about putting bums on seats. And this time around, we've got another great fight card on April the 4th. Firstly, I want to say a huge thank you to Miguel Vasquez. Um, I guess he probably thought that Storm and Chiara weren't really that windy, to be honest with you. And uh, he's made the trip over. We're supposed to have the press conference yesterday. He made the trip. This is a fantastic fighter, former IBF champion of the world. Um, still a world, world-class fighter. Super smart, great style, tough style to beat, and looking to get another shot at a world championship and try and become a two-weight world champion. When we go through the card here, there are a couple of people that couldn't be with us today. Um, I'm going to call them out. Cash Farouk, who was coming yesterday but couldn't come today because he has um, a family party that he could not get out of. Cash Farouk, for me, is one of the most exciting young fighters to come out of Scotland in a long, long time. You saw him lose a razor-thin decision to Lee McGregor. A lot of people thought that he won that fight. He returns for his first championship fight on this card on April 4th. And Simon, this has happened to you quite a lot. Fabio Wardley missed his train. But every time you've been in a title fight, I've noticed that they don't turn up to the press conference. You've got some kind of reputation around here. Has he seen your new tash? And thought you've turned into a little bit of a madman. As long as, you're, as long as you're unable to afford them. Exactly, exactly. This is a great fight. Fabio Wardley against Simon Valilli. Um, Simon now moved up to heavyweight. He looks a lot more comfortable. Always been a massive cruiserweight, not just in the GB system, but also you know when he turned pro as well, giving us some great fights at the arena. Now in the heavyweight division. Fabio Wardley, who's Gillian White managed. Good, good talent. This is for the vacant English heavyweight title. It's a really, really good fight. Going to be a great atmosphere. Both guys can punch. Both guys not afraid to let their hands go. Really, really looking forward to that fight on April the 4th. Down the end, I think, is a little bit of a hidden gem from Northeast Boxing. I was just saying to Fano um, and Phil Jeffries, this guy is bang on the verge of challenging for a world title in the Super Bantamweight division. Currently ranked three. Going to be moving to number two. We expect that title to come vacant later this year when Navarrete moves up to featherweight as well. Thomas Patrick Ward is a great, great talent who I feel has really gone under the radar and worked his way up the world rankings and world system. And if he can get a victory on April the 4th, I believe he's going to be fighting for a world championship this summer as well and potentially a, a world champion for the North East. When we talk about world champions for the North East, I think uh, Savannah Marshall has just picked the right time for women's boxing and for herself and her career to come forward. She will challenge for the WBO Light Heavyweight World Championship against Giovanna Perez from New Zealand on April the 4th. For me, women's boxing has been one of the great success stories over the last couple of years. When we entered um, the market, if you like, with Katie Taylor 
we didn't know what to expect. We've seen some of the top, top atmospheres and great fights come from female boxing over the last couple of years. If anyone watched uh, the Sheffield show on Saturday, I was there and saw um, Terry Harper go and unify the division and become WBC world champion. The atmosphere was electric. It was worthy of any main event atmosphere on a Sky Sports Saturday night fight night. And she did ever so well. She's become a real star in her own right now. And now Savannah Marshall gets the chance. Outside of the comfort zone, a super middleweight who I believe will probably end up fighting at middleweight moves to light heavyweight to take on a champion. Not for a vacant belt, but for an existing champion. And the North East has a chance to crown, like I said, another world champion on April the 4th in Savannah Marshall. It wouldn't be an April... Well, it wouldn't, sorry, it wouldn't be a, a Newcastle fight now without Joe Laws. Yay! I mean, um, this man is... Uh, you know, Joe, it's something about you. Is, <laughs> like, don't take this the wrong way, but... You give, a, you give out that persona that you're a little bit of a Jack and Lad. I mean, I'm sorry, Phil, do you want to get that? <laughs> no, sure. was, that was that the WPO? Oh, I was Frank Warren. Oh, right, okay. okay. All right, tell him we'll see him tomorrow. Um, Joseph Laws, you, uh, you are a character, you are Jack the Lad. I mean, clown, clown can be sometimes taken the wrong way, but actually, I think you've got a good head on your shoulders, and you're impressing me a lot. And uh, I love the way you're going about your business. You've got this following in Newcastle, which, like Lewis, is just sensational. Um, I would like to see you step up on this card, you know, and, and go on and start moving toward English titles and, and stuff like that. And we're going to hear from you in a minute, so don't worry, you're going to get a chance to, uh, to answer that. And going on to the main event before we go to, to April at the front, um, this is a great fight. Great fight because I feel that Lewis Ritson is ready to challenge for the world title now. But this is the kind of fight that I think will confirm to him and the team that it's the right time. Because last time out, he had a big domestic fight against Robbie Davis Jr. Great performance, great win. One of the fights of the year. Now he steps up, I believe, for the first time to a really established world-level fighter, an elite fighter that's already dominated the division at lightweight. And I know because when we first started representing Ricky Burns, and Adrian Broner was down at lightweight. No one wanted to fight Miguel Vasquez. He was the IBF world champion. He was virtually unbeatable at the time, 135 pounds. He got robbed in a fight against Mickey Bay, and then he found himself in the wilderness. Come back at 140 pounds, had some good wins, got robbed last time he was in the UK against O'Hara Davis, and now comes back off a good win, looking to try, and as I said, get a shot to become a two-weight world champion. Excellent, excellent fighter. And we'll speak to these guys up here shortly. April, you are still on your own down there. You made your debut last time out on the card. Great occasion, great atmosphere. And like I said, Savannah will fight for a world title on the card. Terry Harper last week. What a golden time for women's boxing. Women's boxing's amazing at the minute. Um, I watched Terry last week and I thought her box was amazing. And I feel like I hate for women's boxing's just growing and I'm just happy to be a part of it. And I can't wait for Savannah to get a world title on uh, April 4th. What did you learn last time out? Obviously, the experience you boxed, not just there at the arena now, and you had other kind of experiences of pro life. What was it like for you that time, and, and this time going to be a little bit more calmer on April 4th? I'm not going to go looking for the stoppage. I'm going to try to pick my shots a bit better. And, uh, I think these, these journey people, they know how to survive, don't they? So the more I go looking for it, the harder it is to get. So I think I'm going to be a lot more relaxed, relaxed composed, and show me boxing skills a lot more on this one. Good, well, early stages for you, but you can see the future is bright for women's boxing. Thank you. Thomas, how are you? Not too bad, yeah. Good, 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 good. I'll tell you, you're under the radar, but you're there, you're ready, pretty much. Everybody's jostling for positions. Some people are going past you, some are going backwards. The number two, Arnold Kagai, just got beat by Stephen Fulton a couple of weeks ago. That super bantamweight division wide open, and you're right in line for a shot at the world title this year. Yeah, I believe so, Eddie. Um, like I said, we go and get a good win on April the 4th. The division is there for me. Um, some good champions in the way, but I believe I'm the best of lot. I've been flying under the radar for some time, like you said, and uh, I believe I've got the skills to beat anybody. Anybody steps in the ring with me, the only chance I've got to beat me is by knocking me out. And my chin's perfect. So, you know, I believe I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the best in the division and uh, I will show it. How do you rate that division at the moment? We had a unification fight on our card a couple of weeks ago in Miami between Ahmad Liev and Danny Roman. Great fight. Ahmad Liev come through, just 8-0 and now, unified champion. Navarrete looks like he could be moving to featherweight. He's a, a brilliant puncher as well. Ray Vargas is 
quite awkward and slippery as well. But how do you rate those champions in the division? They're all good champions, Eddie. They're all good champions. But um, like I said, I believe I am the best. Um, I believe my skills will be, be too much for them. Um, not saying it's going to be an easy night, not, not one bit. You know, like I said, they're all good champions and all deserve to be world champion. You know, they've proved it again. Um, like you said, that little fighter just uh, unified the titles to beat Danny Roma, another good fighter. But I believe that um, I've got a full bag of tricks in front of me. And, uh, you know, the people don't realise how good I am until they're actually in the ring and fighting me. Look forward to seeing you in action. Changing for the WBO Intercontinental title, moving up to try and secure a world championship. Joe, welcome. You all right, Eddie? Very well, very well. Thank you, mate. Very well. Looking forward to having you back on the show. This is uh, kind of like just... Regular routine for you now, isn't it? Coming out, big TV star, Gucci hat, <laughs> questionable sunglasses, <laughs> but always the same, full of entertainment and, and ready to go on April the 4th. Right, I made the post of this time, so... You did, I know. Uh, and, and top table. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I'm feeling good, counting going well, I'm moving down on weight, I'm feeling better, strong, I'm the gym fitter, and uh, the last two arena shows have been amazing, the atmosphere, what like we're bringing it. I can't wait for it, for it to have it all again. Where do you feel you sit now? You talked about moving to one three five full time. It's gonna yeah, be yeah. not gonna be a problem for you moving down. From yeah, well, uh, obviously, my previous fights were like one four eight, one four sevens, one fifties. Some of them. So I'm gonna move down slowly. I'm fine. Two weeks Saturday, one five uh, one four two, then. Just keep working myself down till next year when I'm 135, and I believe at that weight I'd be a, I'd be a proper handful. <laughs> Obviously, you're selling a huge amount of tickets. You've got great support. How far away do you think you are from moving up the rounds and and start to challenge for you know, the natural route of progression, maybe the English titles and British titles, eliminators as well? Yeah, well, uh, I'm on six rounds now. Later this year, I do a few aids, test the waters, and all that. And uh, next year, I'll be ready for them titles. I was in Miami a couple of weeks ago with Devin Haney. <laughs> he sends his regards to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, uh, what's the situation there? You fancy that fight down the line? I mean, you're going to get Devin Haney at the, at the Newcastle Arena in time. It's going to be a monster. Yeah, You've got to get there first. Uh, that's one of the main reasons why I'm going down on 135, because people are saying, oh, well, what's the point of coming out when you're a different weight? So I thought, yeah, well... I get a 1 3 5, I put the wins together, I look the rounds, and if they want to step up, come in your castle, come to the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it on, Let's get it on. He said he, really, he was really excited to come to Newcastle. He said he's heard all about it and he, he's ready for you when you're ready on the way. Well, I'm ready. Okay. Good. I'm ready now. I like, I, I like that you're setting your standards high. You're, you're still at six rounds, but as far as you're concerned, Devin Haney's next on April the 4th. Joe, it's always a pleasure to have you on the cards, mate, and uh, we look forward to your progression. And of course, we look forward to your ring walk, which pleasure. has just become the ultimate party trick at any live. Come on, we're all to take you home. Exactly. Savannah, welcome, welcome. So pleased to see you get a shot at the world title. Um, bit of a strange one moving up to light heavyweight. We know that, in, especially in women's boxing, a lot of the fighters are fluctuating between weight classes. You've seen Clarissa Shields do that between 168 and 154. Katie obviously moving to 140 and, and people deviating between the weight classes as well. Not your probably your ideal weight class or where you'll end up, but a massive opportunity to become world champion on April the 4th. Yeah, definitely. Um, I just want to say thanks for the opportunity. Eddie, Matchroom, MTK, Peter Fury. But just to be given the chance to box for a world title in, in Newcastle, even if it is the weight above, I've, I've jumped at the chance. She's a reigning defending champion. She's a weight above, so I know she can whack. She's a Brazilian born, a doctor of Kiwi, so that just screams toughness. And these are the these are the challenges that I want. Um, women can go up and down the weight because there isn't that many women about. But this is just the start for me and I'm I'm hoping to become world champion on the fourth of April in Newcastle. When we talk about deviating through the weight classes, where do you see that, that ability to you for do? We know this is at 175. Do you see a, a 160 fights in you as well in World Championship? I think the great thing about this fight is going to give you the opportunity to become a multi-weight world champion quite quickly because you've got that. I think you're happy at 160, 168, 175 and, and 
you've got all those big fights for you as well across the divisions. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've got the height there for light, heavy, middle, super middle. Um, and I am quite strict and I train hard, so that, that does allow me to go up and down the weight. Um, I'm comfortable at middle. I've, I've never been a true super middle. Like I said, I know, um, I know I can hold the weight and I can do it properly. So I, I'm looking forward to this one. Finally, good to be fighting a champion. Sometimes in women's boxing, you see some vacant belts, particularly at light heavyweight. Important to, to dethrone a world champion, I believe, to, to crown yourself a true world champion on April the 4th. Yeah, like I said, she's tough, and everyone who's been put in front of her, she, she's beat. So I know she's, she's not coming over here for a holiday, and this is, like I said, this is the type of challenge that I want. And to be a champion, it's, it's even better. Thank you, Savannah. Look forward to your first world title challenge on April the 12th. We go to Miguel Vasquez. Welcome, Miguel. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making the trip. Uh, big fight for you. You're going to really love the atmosphere in Newcastle on April 4th. Pues muchas gracias por, por la invitación a, a venir aquí a Newcastle. Eh, la verdad me, me encanta a mí el Reino Unido, es la cuarta vez que vengo y, y me siento como si fuera mi casa. Yeah, thanks for the invitation to come here to Newcastle. And every time I come to the UK, I feel like I'm at home, so I'm really pleased to be here. Last time out in the UK, you boxed O'Hara Davis. Uh, most people thought that you won that fight. You're looking to get the victory this time around in the UK. Sí, la verdad que me gustaría eh, empezar a hacer mi carrera aquí en el Reino Unido si, si tuviera las puertas abiertas <coughs> al igual como las he tenido últimamente y, y me encantaría que, que mi carrera finalizara aquí. Yeah, I'd really like to get my, my career kick-started here and to kick-start my career after what I've been doing recently, and that can then open doors for me. Uh, and I'd like to, to finish my career and do well here. When you were a, a lightweight world champion, uh, a lot of people were avoiding you. I know that because I was avoiding you on behalf of some other fighters at the time. And uh, now you seem to be getting these fights and these opportunities. There's no pressure on you now just to go in and try and cause an upset on April 4th. Sí, antes a mucha gente, a muchos peleadores no querían pelear contra ti. Él sabe por qué él no quería que sus peleadores pelearan contra ti. Y ahora supongo que tienes la oportunidad de, de empezar de nuevo aquí y buscar abrirme las puertas. Sí, claro que sí. Este, eh, me gustaría volver a, a ser campeón del mundo. A mí me encantaría volver a tener una oportunidad grande y pues yo pienso que Aquí sería mi punto de inicio. Yes, I mean, I'd love to go on and be world champion again and to get the opportunity to do that. Uh, this would be my first step to doing that, winning this fight. Aunque sé que no la tengo fácil porque enfrente de mí tengo a Luis Ritson, que es eh, un peleador pues, fuerte y que se, arriba del ring no será nada fácil pelear contra él. Although that's not to say that this is going to be an easy fight in any way, stretch or form, because Luis Ritson is a great fighter and it's going to be very tough for me when I fight him in the ring. Thank you very much, Miguel. Thank you. Yeah. Lewis, welcome, welcome. Again, like Joe, this is sort of becoming second nature to you now. Big fights at the arena, huge following, and now the real serious stuff starts, right on the verge now of a world championship shot. I think everyone in boxing knows this is a very, very tough fight on April 4th. Yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be a very hard fight. And if I get through this, I think by the end of next year, or early next year, we'll have three world champions in the North East for me, Tommy, and Savannah. Miguel Vasquez has ruled at 135 pounds. You would have seen him in the O'Hara Davis most fight. Most people felt that he won that fight as well. What's the difficulty about the style, the movement, the experience, the knowledge, all of those things? You've got to take your time and, and be patient in them. Yeah, he can do a bit of everything, can't he? He's proved that world champion. I think he was world champion for four or five years. <clears throat> so it's going to be a very tough night, but we've got a good team behind us and Fano will come up with a good game plan and I'll stick to it and I'll, I'll get the win. Fighting for a world title, do you think it's almost as much about confidence and belief that you're ready for that occasion? We've seen 
a lot of people putting you to talking about the Josh Taylor fight and you sort of almost brush that one off and say, yeah, 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 in time, in time. But these are the kind of fights that will prove to yourself and, and the team that it's time for you to go on and challenge for the world title. Yeah, definitely. This is the sort of fight that I need uh, for the experience to, to get that level. Um, I think we showed in the last fight that we're, we're capable of getting there. We've got a good win and um, I think we'll have another good win on April 4th and we're going to bring some more big time boxing to the North East. Talking about big time boxing, honestly, the amount of people that are travelling up now from London or you know, across from Manchester to experience that atmosphere in the North East, you must be proud of yourself for, for bringing that back. I know you're a you know, humble guy, but it is down to your performances and the support that you've got that you've put Newcastle on the map now as really the premier destination for British boxing. No, it's the, the full North East, you know, uh, not just Newcastle, everyone's getting involved and obviously the fighters are doing their cards to keep winning, the main event to keep winning. And the whole North East will just stick behind me and get behind me. And you've heard the atmosphere, it's absolutely unbelievable. I think it's the best in the country and I think we'll show that again on April the 4th. And that home experience, that home advantage, important always. But with that atmosphere, you get the feeling you're going to be very tough to beat as you continue to develop as a fighter in Newcastle. Yeah, definitely very tough. You know, it feels like Vasquez will feel like he's fighting two people in there with the atmosphere. So I just kind of wait. I'm buzzing. We've been training very hard in the gym. And, uh, we're going to show that we can go on and win a world title after April 4th. And finally, when you look at the division, only two world championships holders in the division right now, Josh Taylor, of course, um, and Ramirez, two great fighters, but underneath that as well, some big fights for you moving forward. Talk about Regis Progray, Maurice Hooker, those kind of fights as well. It's, it's a great time for the division. No, great time and the division's absolutely chock And, you know, apart from the, the top two, I'm, I'm confident of beating, beating any of them. So hopefully we'll get Vasquez out of the way and uh, we'll get another big fight and we'll prove that we're that level and we'll beat one level and go on to win a world title. Thank you, Lewis. Great fight. Lewis Ritson against Miguel Vasquez, April 4th in the Newcastle Arena, set for another great, great night. Some big announcements also coming for the card on matchups as well this week and also some interesting additions as well. I've actually seen Dave Allen here somewhere. He's, he's not on the card, but I'm not sure what he's doing here. Maybe he's going to ask to be at some point. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see what happens there. But another great card, April the 4th, live on Sky Sports in the UK, to zone in America. Look forward to just a stunning atmosphere and another night of World Championship boxing, this time with Savannah Marshall challenging for the WBO Light Heavyweight Championship. Thomas Patrick Ward moving on to try and challenge for the WBO Super Bantamweight World Championship as well. Great heavyweight clash, Simon Valilli against Fabio Wardley, April Hunter, Chad Ellis, a lot of young fighters coming through as well on the card, and of course Joe Laws making plenty of noise as he moves into the exciting and dangerous stuff in his career. Thank you as always for attending today. All the fighters are going to be available for the media and we have a head-to-head -head with Lewis Ritson and Miguel Vasquez up here. Once again, Newcastle, thank you very much indeed.